Minnetonka. I'm David Law, Superintendent of Minnetonka Schools. Thank you for joining us for this episode of our district podcast, Ahoy Minnetonka. Continuing with our back to school mini episodes, for this segment, we'll be talking with one of our six elementary school principals and with one of our head office assistants at an elementary school. Back to school is just days away, and I know families and students get both anxious and excited about the start of the school year. Our guest today will help set parents up with what they should know to be ready to begin a great year with an elementary student in Minnetonka schools. Joining us today from Clear Springs Elementary are Principal Kurt Carpenter and Head Office Assistant Debbie Guido. Kurt and Debbie, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thanks. I'm Kurt Carpenter, Principal at Clear Springs. It's my 31st year in education and my 20th year as Principal of Clear Springs. My own children are 26, 28, and 29 and I remember their elementary experience like it was yesterday. I still love serving elementary kids, and one of my greatest joys is working with great people like Debbie. Well, thank you. <laughs> wow, and Debbie. Thank, thank you for having us. Absolutely. Um, and again, my name is Debbie Guido, and this will be my 19th year um, with Minnetonka, my 13th year at Clear Springs. Prior to that, I was um, at Minnetonka Community Ed. And my kids graduated from Minnetonka as well, and it's my second home. Mm -hmm. I love the staff, the students. It's like family. It's great. Well, from when I've seen you, you in the office, I feel like I'm walking into your home. Oh, and well, thank I mean you. that in a great way. Thank you. So, uh, Kurt and Debbie, school's right around the corner. You know, people always wonder about when teachers come back. What's happening two weeks before school starts? Are, are teachers in the building? Who's in the building? What, what's the hustle and bustle right yeah, now? Yeah, we use summer to update and refresh our schools. And this year we're adding air conditioning to many rooms, new floors, new cabinets. We're also improving our playground equipment and our back play field. So kids are gonna be excited to come back to school and so will teachers. Our staff have been coming in off and on all summer to get their rooms ready and plan for the year. Teacher assignments were posted at 2 p.m. last Friday and our open house is next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Teacher assignments being posted, that's something I hear a lot about at the elementary school. What goes into that teacher assignment posting and how do, how do, how do people respond to it? Yeah. Well, we began making class lists last April for this year. We asked for parent input, then teachers use that input along with what they know about kids to make class lists. And then of course we add and drop kids throughout the summer. I work with teachers on revising the list. So those lists are posted with a lot of intent. And uh, we also use that as an opportunity to encourage parents to know how to log into Skyward so mm -hmm. we can kind of lead them towards Skyward a little bit. And Debbie, do you, what role do you play as teachers come back in and supporting them getting into their classrooms? Is there a lot of movement between classrooms for teachers? There, there's always movement if a teacher moves, changes grade levels. Um, but I don't get too involved with, with that piece. I'm typically standing or sitting at my desk entering all of those lists. Mm -hmm. So, and that deadline, that, uh, which is typically the Friday, third Friday of, of, of August, and parents know, new parents you will know, mm -hmm. that's, that's when teacher assignments go live and it is a big deal. Um, and it's excitement, kids wanna know, parents wanna know, who's my teacher, who's my teacher? So, so I don't, I'm not too involved in terms of classrooms and, Teachers do come in and ask a lot of questions, of course, about their students, et cetera, that I can provide them with. But, but our goal is to get mm -hmm. the building ready for staff and students. Mm -hmm. And the custodians and, and Debbie and Jennifer and I in the main office, we take it very seriously that we want the rooms in the school to be ready so that teachers and, and kids can do their thing when right. school starts. Right, for sure. Debbie, what are some of the more common questions you hear from parents in August? I thought about that. Um, today and I would say the two most common questions are about transportation and Skyward. Skyward is our student management system. In terms of transportation, I could not, we could not encourage, encourage parents more to have their students ride the bus if possible. Really helps with parent pickup at the end of the day, mm -hmm. drop off and traffic flow. Um, if a parent has not contacted contact transportation and would like their child to take the bus, we highly encourage it. Again, find transportation contact information on the district website. Email, call, they'll be happy to help you. Skyward, Skyward is a parent go-to for attendance, 
grades, report cards, teacher names. So parents, my tip for parents is become familiar with Skyward if you're not, know how to log in into your SSO and contact the Family Help Desk if they have any questions. And that contact is family.helpdesk at minnetonkaschools.org. Oh, awesome. Yes. Uh, for first time incoming kindergarten parents and for parents with new students in the district, this can be an anxious time. What are some of the ways that you as a school, and I know it probably starts before August, what are some of the ways that you go out of your way to make sure kids feel welcome coming to Clear Springs? Yeah, let's take team on this a little bit. We will. So we'll go yeah. all the way back to last winter when we have kindergarten information nights then answering all the questions we can about enrollment, parents come for tours, families come for tours. Enrollment settles out, and then our first big event is in May. Mm -hmm. Why don't you talk about that? And that's uh, parents and incoming kindergartners, those tiny little cuties, come and visit classrooms. And they will be, they visit a classroom that, um, the option that they have chosen, whether it be Spanish, English, mm -hmm. or Ready Start Kindergarten. And they'll be in a classroom and working on a little art project with students and the teacher while parents are listening to Kurt and our PTO president speak. Once that's done, they take a little bus ride in the neighborhood. So it's a little practice for them mm -hmm. so that they can be familiar with getting on a bus on the first day of school. Mm -hmm. So that's in May. That's and in then May. the kindergarten mixer is this yeah. Saturday. It's, it sounds fun, doesn't fun. it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is kids wearing little name tags. Hi, my name is Charlie. And it's color coded according to their teacher placement. So kids are looking for other kids on the playground that have purple on their name tag. And they get to know their new classmates right away. So we do that on Saturday and um, we treat it like a little picnic and a play opportunity on our playground. Then we fast forward to open house next Wednesday and kids bring in school supplies and meet their teacher. Then and they get very. It's a great way to get familiar with the building too. They can stay for 40, 45 minutes ish, and walk around the school, meet teachers, meet their classmates. Mm -hmm. and, and we have uh, the one-on-one -on -one assessment with the kindergarten teacher. Right. Uh, takes place those two days right after Labor Day before mm -hmm. kindergarten starts school on Thursday. Kids mm -hmm. uh, do an extensive assessment with their teacher one-on-one. -on -one, gives us a baseline of how the student is performing. And then finally, the first day of school for kindergarten next Thursday. So by the time kids start school in Minnetonka, if you include tours and all the ways parents connect with us, they, they may have five or six contacts with us before right. school starts. And I always encourage parents to come back as many times as it takes until the child feels comfortable with starting school. Well, Kurt, I know that you do more than just welcome in August. What are some ways that you work with students to make sure that students that are new to the building have a friendly face. Mm. Wow, well, I think, first of all, I hire great people. I mean, we in Minnetonka, we hire people like Debbie, people uh, like teachers in Paris who just flat out love kids and, and who present a warm front. I, I'm thinking of the first day of school when we have kids getting off the bus and we line our hallways with over 100 staff members, helping kids find classrooms, mm -hmm. forming a great first impression. Um, and I, I would say to parents, if kids are anxious, listen carefully to their kids and then assure them that school is a fun place and it's a place where you can take risks and um, you know learn and and not be afraid of anything we provide a safe environment so um, really just having fun is our primary goal with kids when they first start well i had i a proud moment as someone who works with you was when I was at an event away from Minnetonka and this person said we were shopping for schools and we went to Clear Springs. We ended up not choosing it because of some geographic issue the family had, but they were impressed that they'd met you 14 years ago and then saw you six years later and you went up and said, hey, Kurt, it's great to see you. And they said, how does this principal who only met us once remember our name? So. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. The Let's talk about Debbie. It's That's amazing. Good. The names <laughs> um, that he remembers, the aunts, the uncles, grandparents. He's known for, known for that. It's very so personal. You, uh, excellence in how we, we live and um, well-being and belonging. 
What are some things that you do with students so that students play a part in owning Clear Springs environment? Because I saw them present at the school board. They're pretty amazing. Yeah, they sure are. And David Wickland, our assistant principal, led that presentation. He excels in this area. I would say when kids feel safe and grounded, they learn better, number one. And we can help them feel safe with things like a predictable routine. So for example, we start each day with the morning announcements, the Pledge of Allegiance, birthday celebrations, um, a message on core character values such as empathy, love, or integrity. That's part of our, our announcements. Uh, we conclude with a mindful minute where we listen to a peaceful mm. bit of music and we focus on our day and um, have purpose for our day ahead. And then our classrooms use an approach to student management called responsive classroom, where they come up with class rules together and they agree on how they're going to handle things when, when kids step out of bounds and they do it together. Uh, so our school climate is important to us. And you know we, we teach kids that we are Clear Springs and what that means is we're responsible, respectful, safe, and ready to learn. And when an entire school community embraces those values, kids feel connected. Now I know we've got very involved parents across Minnetonka schools and certainly at Clear Springs. What are some PTO specific things that for parents out there that they should look forward to experiencing from the Clear Springs Parent Teacher Organization? Yeah. Um, I'll say a few things about that. We have an amazing PTO. Our PTO president, Christina, has been in several days already this week mm -hmm. preparing for this Saturday's get together for mm -hmm. kindergarten and for the open house. Um, she will be at the open house and there will be a table for parents to sign up for volunteer opportunities. Some of those opportunities are just helping in the classroom. We have a teacher basket in the workroom, help co make copies or laminate or whatever it might be. So we have a lot of projects that parents can participate in. Mm -hmm. um, and Christina has a whole list. Right now I can't even think of all of them, but it, there's a lot of parent involvement, especially for our fundraisers. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a big one is our fundraiser. Yeah, we have two big fundraisers each year and uh, we really use those as an opportunity to have fun and celebrate. So our spring parent night out, for example, we uh, have a silent auction, but it's really a, an excuse for parents to get together and just have fun it's and, great and meet fun. each other. And we raise a lot of money. So mm -hmm. uh, we have the pancake breakfast around uh, Thanksgiving time. We have our annual costume parade yeah. around Halloween. And uh, we, we love to have fun as a community. Mm -hmm. Halloween parade's a big deal. <laughs> oh yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've experienced that in my first year. I know all the energy. So as yes. we wrap up this episode, and you think to this upcoming year, what are you most excited about? And Debbie, I'm gonna start with you first. What are you most excited about for the 23-24 school year? I am, I'm always excited to see the kids who have, who are returning because they think they're, you know, they know it all, they're familiar, they know the people. I'm also so excited to see the incoming kindergartners. And I have very special names when I look at the lists and I always wanna know like this certain name, like oh, I wanna put that name and face together and see that cute face. So that's always fun. And you know, there'll be a few tears now here and there, but you Mostly know, the parents. Love, exactly, <laughs> e exactly. It's sometimes it's, it's just the parents, but um, I'm just excited for, for the new year. One thing that I haven't said that you know we might have to invite you to is you know sometimes we have a student who might come in the office that might be just not having the best day or need a little pick me up and we have dance parties. I feel like I walked in right after a dance party <laughs> once last year. We do. Jennifer gets out our little disco ball and we have like a two or three minute da a dance party and you should see the smiles on faces. And it just yeah. picks everybody up who just, you know, might need a little pick-me-up. That me up. sounds amazing. So next time we have a dance party, we might so. invite you, Mr. Law. Sure. Okay. How about yeah. you, Kurt? Well, the building is lonely and quiet during the summer, mm -hmm. so I think I, I miss the laughter of children. And I, I just want to see smiles and, and, and hear laughter again. That's what I'm looking forward to most. Yeah. In the last minute and a half, one of the things I've been really impressed with is you have some special technology around parent pickup. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me that because I'd never, you know, I've been around schools for a long time and as a superintendent for a long time. What is that? How yeah. does it work? Well, I credit Jennifer, our office assistant, mm -hmm. with really 
finding the right tool for us, but we partnered with a company early on called iSchool Ride, and I think we were helpful in development of the program for them, and then um, they've now rolled it out uh, nationwide, but uh, it allows parents to pull onto the school campus, and when they reach part of what's called a geofence, it activates the app. Their child's picture then pops up in the classroom on the smart board. Child sees it in the classroom, knows that mom and dad are nearby, starts walking out to the curb, just as mom and dad are pulling around to the sidewalk. So works really well. Mm -hmm. And it allows That's us great. to have really only 15 to 20 kids outside at one time, easier to supervise, safe and secure. Yeah, I was really impressed by that and parents seem to like it mm -hmm. too. And we see it in the office as well on our desktops. So we can see who's in, who's out, and it just changes the color from Sounds blue to green. Very parent friendly and left. convenient. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you both for giving up a little bit of time as we get ready for this school year. It's been great watching and getting to know you both during my first year here. But thanks for pouring it into the school for our kids as we get ready to start next week. It's been great Bless. to have you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much for having us. As we close, I want to thank you each for taking the time to connect. And please get out and enjoy the last few days of summer, of course. We can't wait to see you and your students back in the start of the school year right next door to my office. Until then, take care, and I look forward to connecting again soon.